I'm here from WHC, which is an acronym of uh, Wearable House Control. So what's the problem we're trying to solve there? Well, light switches, they're difficult. You've got to go to a place, you've got to find a light switch, you've got to turn it on. Sometimes you don't even know like which light it turns on. It's like, yuck. So where do we decide it? Well, a lot of people these days have a smartwatch. So why not just take all the light switches you have in your house and just put them on your smartwatch? Um, so this is basically our project. Um, now, a wearable house coat was a typo, as cool as that sounds in the original like allocation documents, but it kind of sort of stuck with us. We like it. Um, so basically, it's a project based around control of uh, Internet of Things devices. So think smart lights, uh, Spotify, uh, sort of like Amazon Alexa. And we use a wide range of technologies. Um, we've got uh, the Android app is written in Java. Um, servers written in Go, and we've got a web interface written in, uh, using React.js, and we even have a little bit of JSON there as well. Um, so, in our, for, to get our sort of uh, app working as uh, neatly as possible, we decided to, rather than just show all of the controls that you have available to you, um, only the controls that are in your current room. So we use indoor location tracking. How do we do this? Well, GPS won't work, because GPS needs a direct view of the sky. Even if it has one, it's really not accurate enough. Typically, GPS is around 3 to 10 meters of accuracy. We need around 1. But Wi-Fi is everywhere. So we basically use this thing called Find. Basically, what this does is it uses naive things to take, look at the current MAC address of your current connected uh, Wi-Fi access point and also the signal strength. Then we can sort of build up a, train, a set of training data of what room corresponds to what data. And it works reasonably well. So once we had a way of finding out where the user was, we needed to have them control uh, the devices in their home. Um, we started off using lights, uh, using uh, Philips Hues, which are pretty much uh, one of the most well-known Internet of Things devices. Um, you may have seen our kind of glowing lights in the Intel lab earlier. Um, from there, we moved on to playable media. We'd uh, originally planned to use uh, the Chromecast um, simply for uh, timing reasons and complexity. We switched to use Spotify. Again, you may have heard the god-awful disco music uh, in the Intel lab. Um, we had some issues initially with Spotify authentication, but I'm pleased to say I think we got through that. Um, and then finally, um, beyond the scope of our project, we could move on to any Internet of Things device. Um, obviously, it's quite hard to get hold of smart toilets, smart curtains. We have been told they do exist. Um, but the framework exists within our app to introduce those devices and control them as we would our lights or our Spotify. Um, so next we basically wanted to say, well, do we really want the user to have to turn on the switch every single time? So this is where we introduce the idea of an automation. So quite simply, any device action you can think of is automatable. And it's all configured from the web. So, it's, so the user is able to set it up so that if they walk into a particular location, stuff happens to them automatically. This can also save energy. Um, for, instance, for instance, if no one's in the room, why have the lights on? Um, and the user can have really complex uh, actions as well. For instance, if two people in the bedroom, maybe let's turn the heights to a nice pink hue for the right romantic setting. <laughs> but we do actually have just one more thing. Because we just... Uh, two more things. Two more things. Two things. So finally, um, we created uh, a couple of apps, um, one for the watch and one for the web, that allow you to both configure and control um, our project. So on the left, we have the web interface um, where you can see all of your connected devices and configure them. So, as Tim said, if you have two people in the bedroom, you can turn the lights pink. Uh, and then on the right, uh, we have the uh, Android Watch app. Um, and using that, we can turn on and off devices. We can control things in other rooms if we want. And then by holding down a particular device's icon, we can bring up more detailed controls, such as setting the color of the lights or pausing and playing music. So now we have just one more thing. We basically wanted to see how far we could go with automations. And here, using our JSON script, we've managed to build a one-bit, one full-bit adder using automations. 
basically, if one person is in a room, then um, only like zero will be on. But if two people are, are in the room, then one and zero are, um, are on. Um, so that's our project. Thank you very much for listening. And also, thank you to IMC for providing me the <laughs>